All right, folks, so um, in the wake of the Supreme Court's decision uh, preventing race from being used in college admissions, oh, my goodness, uh, these uh, white conservatives are just loving this. They're beside themselves, and, and, and I love it when they talk about merit, merit, merit. It sh shouldn't be about race. It's about merit. See, whenever it involves black people or Latinos, or Native Americans, in some case Asians, they always go, look, we should not, we, this cannot be about race. Yet, whenever it involves folks who are white, they are stunningly silent, silent when it involves them. It's sort of like, and I say it all the time, I say it all the time, um, you'll see a story and they'll say, uh, the president meets with a group of black pastors. But when it's a group of white pastors, they don't say nothing. They just call them pastors. And so uh, it's always curious uh, when, when that happens. Um, and, and I sort of crack, crack up uh, when they do that. Um, and so I've been watching all these takes in the past week since the Supreme Court Rendered their decision. And one that caught my eye was last night. On Fox News, Will Kane, formerly of ESPN, had on his uh, former colleague, Stephen A. Smith. They were on the show together, and because Stephen A. had discussed this uh, on um, his radio show. So I, I just got a kick out of this almost eight and a half minute interview, not because of what was said, because of what wasn't said. Press play. Host of the Stephen A. Smith Show and First Take on ESPN joins us now. Stephen A., great to see you, man. What's going on, buddy? How you doing, man? You want me to just go right at that clip? Is that how we should do this? We just start go, go, right go. there? Feel, feel free. Okay. Let's There's go. no such Let's thing. Let's go. I'm the, here. The, I know you are. The problem is, Stephen A., in, in truth, when it comes to justice, there is no yeah. such thing as black America and white America. There are only individuals. Okay. And so when you assign co- Yeah. See, see, already, already that boy's starting off lying. Uh, he, he already starting off lying. Will, you lying. See, I, I love the utopia when they say, no, there are no... See, that sort of sounds like the Obama speech. There are no, bla there are no black Americas. There are no, there, there are no red Americas, no blue Americas. There's just the United States of America. That shit sound cute. It sounds cute and wonderful. It's sort of like the people when they respond to King's I have a dream speech. They always like, oh, it's the content of character. And oh, why can't our, our little boys, little girls hold hands? But they are silent when it comes to redlining. They're silent when it comes to discrimination. They're silent when it comes to uh, uh, home values in black, in census tracts, largely black. They're silent when you talk about the health disparities between whites and blacks. They're silent about all of those things, but no, they're just a collection of individuals. That has always been a lie in this country. Press play. Ability to individuals of the past, to individuals of today, there's simply nothing to hold anyone accountable for. Why do I pay the, pay the price for the sins of the past and you reap the benefits in the case of the affirmative action? I'm not saying Why do I pay the price for the sins of the past and you reap the benefits? I, I want y'all to remember those words. I want you to remember those words. Press play. You had affirmative action, but you as sure, a black man sure. would reap the benefits of affirmative action for the sins committed on someone of the past. We are only in the end, Stephen A., individuals. Mm -hmm. Well, I was, first of all, I get where you're coming from, and I can understand how you would look at it that way. You have to respect the fact that I have a different cultural background, a different experience than you, and I might feel a bit differently about it. What I would tell you is this. There's so many people, and the people that have been supportive of the Supreme Court's latest ruling, are of the mindset that blacks were getting an unfair advantage. What black people would contend to you is that it wasn't an unfair advantage. Remember, race was a consideration, one of many considerations that would be taken into the equation. 
equation when you talk about college admissions. And I think ultimately diversity, equity and inclusion is next personally when you think about some of the things that have been taken, taking place in corporate America. But it wasn't that. It was an effort to sort of make an effort to even the playing scales to some degree because of the iniquities exacted against the African-American community in this country. It wasn't about giving them an advantage. It was about highlighting the fact that they were discriminated, meaning we were discriminated against at that particular moment in time. And that's why the policy was instituted to begin with. So when folks are walking around acting as if there is a reason to celebrate, and I'm looking at folks that were feel, that are feeling like somehow, some way, they've been shortchanged. My mentality is, wait a minute, the policies were implemented to begin with because the African-American community was being shortchanged. And they were being not denied the same privileges or the same opportunities that were accorded to white folks in so America. What I would say to that is you do not solve past discrimination by present or future discrimination. And there were certainly injustices Fair. under the banner of affirmative action inflicted upon individuals, mm -hmm. whether or not they be white or Asian American. Stop in right there. Really? Will just said there were injustices inflicted upon white people and Asian Americans and when it comes to affirmative action. Will Kane, let me ask you this question. Who has been the greatest beneficiary of affirmative action since its inception? White women. White women. Across the board. In college admissions. In contracting. It is without a doubt white women and the white children they have bore, bore and their white husbands and their white parents and white grandparents have been the, been the greatest beneficiary of affirmative action since its inception. That's a fact. But that's what happens, Will. When you actually read and you seek true information, press play. Harvard, in the situation at mm -hmm. Harvard, an African-American student mm -hmm. in the top 50% of his academic class, Stephen A., had just as mm -hmm. good a chance as an Asian student or a white student in the top 10% mm -hmm. of their class. Is that right. just, is that just discrimination? No. And by the way, if you, you know, and I'm sure you did listen to my podcast and I appreciate you doing so. If you recall, I did not say, you know what? I did not say that it wasn't discrimination. I acknowledge the fact you didn't see me. You didn't hear me speak against, you know, anyone from the Asian community that had brought that case uh, to the justices. I understood where they were coming from. My argument was against folks in white America that was saying even, the, you know, presidential candidate Donald Trump talking about now we get back to a merit, you know, a society based on merit, yes. ignoring what brought affirmative action policies into play to begin with. We have people in white America acting as if they don't know how it came about. Okay. So if somebody from the Asian community or the Latino community, they had an issue and they felt that they were, they, they were, they, they were denied an opportunity. That's a different argument than white America coming up and saying, we don't feel that we've been treated fairly well, in this is where we, this. Yeah. When the unfairness was exacted by white folks in America. Well, that's where you and I go full circle and get a little bit stuck in the mud because I will refer to talking about individuals. Right. Individuals, whether or not they be white or right. Asian, can be the victims of injustice and discrimination. Okay. But I do want to ask you a sincere question. In the 1970s, in the 1970s, when the, 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 mm -hmm. the, the, the program of affirmative action was implemented, Stephen A., at that time, the mm -hmm. Supreme Court of the United States said there would be a day when it would no longer be required. When they re-upped it in 2003, right. they anticipated another 25 years of affirmative action. So Action. Well, we came just short yeah. of that. It's been 22, what it's been uh, 20, 21 years since that decision was mm -hmm. made at the Supreme Court. The question is, okay. even if you're making up for past sins, Stephen A., when does it come to an end? Right here. When? Uh, hell, Will, that ain't hard. It comes to an end when you have actually seen substantive change. On the federal level, of $560 billion being spent every single year, African Americans receive 1.67% of federal contracts, 1.67.
You've heard me say before, when Maynard Jackson became the mayor of Atlanta, African-American businesses in a majority black city were receiving 0.0012% of city contracts. It wasn't they could not do the job. It wasn't they were not qualified. It was because they were being frozen out because of a white-led system that controlled the money. Maynard Jackson changed that, Will Kane. That's why when Maynard Jackson left the mayoral office after his first two terms, he literally could not be hired by a what is called a white shoe law firm in Atlanta because they were angry and he dared to challenge the very system. Will loves to sit here and talk about, oh my goodness, uh, affirmative action and, 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 and how much this thing, how much longer we wait. Taking into to account uh, this right here, uh, when you talk about uh, this issue of private equity in this country, nearly 99% of the trillions of dollars that are in private equity are controlled by white people, mostly white men. Yet, when you look at studies, the studies actually show, and if you actually go to this study uh, right here, this is from 2017, examining the returns, the financial returns of diverse private equity firms. This report shows that diverse firms, black, being led by black folks and others, they outperform white-led firms, yet the black and minority firms are capped and not able to access more dollars. Will Cain kept talking about merit. Where I come from, if you actually are doing better than somebody else, then you should be able to get to manage more money. That's not how they actually do it. They capped them. When President Obama was president, I was called to a meeting at the Treasury Department. I was told that black and minority firms, when it came to the management of TARP funds, outperformed white private equity firms. Roland said, I guess that means the black and minority firms are about to access more money from the Treasury Department. The two brothers talking to me went quiet. See, again, Will, if y'all want to have a merit conversation, oh, brother, we can have a merit conversation. All black folks are saying it was what James Brown said, just open the door and I get it for myself. But y'all don't want to really have a merit conversation, do y'all? I don't think you do. Press play. Do we stop discriminating on the basis of race? When people in positions of power have proven that they're exercising fairness, come hella high water. It's really, really that simple. I'm so glad that you asked that question. But that's because impossible it is that to define. There's, there's, no, well, again, but again, when you're looking at numbers, for example, why do we say, why did Yale in the, in the 70s sit up there and say, we want 10% of our student populace to be made up of minorities? You know why? Because they knew without those rules, those laws in place, they didn't anticipate that that would be allowed. In today's corporate America, you still have folks. You have black folks being paid less than white folks. You have black women being played, paid, paid, paid less than white women. You have white women obviously deserving a lot of opportunities that they obviously richly deserve. They're getting paid less than white men. But Everywhere you, but, you turn, there's a level of unfairness that's being exercised. But you're so ascribing because of that, all the only those thing that changes that is the law as opposed to somebody's conscience. But you're ascribing all those differences to race when there's so many different contributing the factors into why corporate America right. may look a certain way. You oh. and I both love Oh, oh my God. Oh, you, you're ascribing those things to race. Really? Go to my iPad uh, right here. Study reveals how white households headed by high school dropouts are three times wealthier than black families led by a college graduate. A shocking new study reveals white American high school dropouts three times likely. The study also found that white college students receive more free financial handouts from their parents than their black counterparts. Parts. Black families overall are also less likely to receive a healthy inheritance payout. See, I love how Will Kane tried to do a little dance. Like, do, oh, no, no, no. There are other factors. Yes, Will, there are other factors because it's likely white boys like you who are in power who then are providing and giving jobs and opportunities to folk who are non black. Uh oh. Did I actually just say that? D did I say earlier that? Stephen A. is a former colleague of Will at ESPN. 
Here's a perfect example. Will Cain keeps talking about merit. He keeps talking about merit. What gets you there? If merit is actually used, Will Cain should have never been hired at ESPN. Oh, I'm sorry. Shall I break it down? Will and I were at CNN together. Was Will Cain ever a reporter? Nope. Columnist? Nope. What was he? A lawyer who bought a couple of media companies. Did Will Cain do what Roland did? And that is appear for free for four and a half years on CNN and MSNBC and Fox and BET and Court TV? Nope. He hires an agent that gets him a job. The white people at CNN in Washington, D.C. were mad that he got hired. How do I know? I overheard them say, where he come from? Who hired him? Oh, how did Will K know they said it? Because I told Will. Oh, yeah, I said, Will, the D.C. folks wonder how you got hired, where you came from. They questioning why you here. I told him that while we were shooting a pilot in D.C. So when his time at CNN ran out, all of a sudden you look up, Will's on ESPN. Wait a minute, hold up. How's Will Kane on ESPN? Does Will Kane ever play sports? Hell no. Not a professional. Has Will Kane ever reported on sports? Hell no. So how did Will Kane get a job at ESPN? Oh, Y'all might see I'm hating. I'm not. We get along. I destroyed him all the time with his silly arguments. He was a nice guy. He was the University of Texas. I'm with the Texas A&M. But here's the whole deal. Go to my iPad. This is Will Kane's bio. Go to the bottom here. It says, Kane has served as a contributor for the National Review, guest hosted ABC's The View and MSNBC's Way Too Early. He has appeared on Fox News, MSNBC, Morning Joe, HBO's Real Time with Bill Maher. He's a licensed attorney in Texas, resides in New York City. It says right here, before entering television, Kane financed, bought, and sold two digital and print media companies uh, and explains what that is. Nowhere in here does it say Will Kane has any sports experience whatsoever. So how... Did Will Cain be hired at the worldwide leader in sports? Because his agent was Nick Khan. And who was Nick Khan? The most powerful agent at CAA, who now is the CEO of the WWE. So let me explain to y'all how this system works in television. See, when you really ain't got no talent, so, but you got an agent, the agent represents other people. And the agent tells the execs, yo, listen here, if y'all want to re-sign my person, you got to pick this person here up. That's how Will Kane got hired at ESPN, because Nick Khan got him hired. If we're talking about merit, Will Kane should have never been hired to host anything at ESPN, because he had no background. He had no history. He had no, literally no expertise in sports. So how was he sitting across from Stephen A on first take? He did ESPN and left ESPN and got signed to Fox News. Well, how did that happen? Because he got the ESPN job. He got the ESPN job because of the CNN job. Well, how'd you get the CNN job? Because you got the hookup. No experience whatsoever. But now, we want to talk about talent? And now we want to talk about, well, how do these things change? When do they change? Well, black people, Will, would love to ask, when does the world change when black people who, do, who are mediocre get great opportunities, Will, to host national shows? You got a great head of hair, but let's be honest. Your resume does not say you have the, the requisite experience to be discussing national politics. There's nothing in your resume that says that. Nothing. But we know how this works. That's how Abby Huntsman got hired at, at CNN. That's how Abby Huntsman got hired at MSNBC. That's how Abby Huntsman got hired at Fox News because her daddy was the governor of Utah. No talent, no skill set. Same with Meghan McCain. No talent, no skill set. But my father, my father, my father, my father, my father, my father, my father. Do me a favor, Will Cain. Show me a black person with no talent, 
no experience, who all of a sudden gets hired for all of these major jobs. That's how you have a disparity in this country when it comes to income. That's how you actually see uh, how white privilege works in America, Will Kane, because you can't point to anybody black with a similar resume who had the same rise as you or Tucker Carlson or Abby Huntsman or Meghan McCain. And I can go on and on and on and on and on. I can even go back to the days of Catherine Cryer, who CNN hired as a news anchor sitting next to Bernie Shaw and all she was before was a Texas judge. Had never worked in a local market, had never, was a one-man band, had never gone out to report, but all of a sudden she became a main anchor because she was cute and the execs liked her. Press play. Of sports, we both debated in sports. I could play turnabout right. as fair play and go, why aren't there more white NBA mm -hmm. players? That must be, uh, that must be mm -hmm. discrimination. But th we both know the answer mm -hmm. is because merit has dictated who's in the NBA. And whatever's happening in society, well, and I would never, Stephen A., I would never sit and say every decision made is purely right. based upon merit, but we, sure. we aspire to that. that. We aspire to that. Right. And I think that the Supreme Court's right. decision has been a big leap forward in getting to where we right. judge things based upon merit. Stop right there. See right there. Okay, see, here we go again. So he decides to bring up the NBA. I could flip it and say, you know, why you don't have as many white basketball players? Because it's real simple. Reverend Jackson has made this point for years. Reverend Jackson has said, if the rules are clear and they're published and we're all on equal footing, black folks ready to roll. He said, do you know why black folks are able to compete in the NBA? He said, because the goal is 10 feet high, whether you're in Madison Square Garden, whether you're in the Forum, whether you're in the Toyota Center, whether you're in a high school gym. The distance from the free throw line is the same everywhere you go. From the three point line, it's the same. You get the same timeouts, I get the same timeouts. You get five, I get five. Traveling is traveling, double dribble is double dribble. The rules are clear and the rules are published. So when y'all talk about merit, the bottom line is this here. Black folks say, oh, we gonna kill that when it's clear. Why is singing the same way? Hey, you either can sing or your ass can't sing. You can be off key, you can be on key. We understand that when the rules are published and the rules are clear, and we absolutely can go one-on-one, -on -one, yo, let's roll. That's why we can compete in track, in basketball, in football, in baseball. But see, here's what happens that Will doesn't want to deal with here. Let me use baseball as an example. It's a lot of black kids with baseball talent, but they don't have the resources to hire the private coaches. They don't have the resources to play essentially professional ball on the traveling teams. They don't have the specialized coaches. And so even though you say, oh, no, 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 but the rules are published, the rules are clear, we're all equal, but we're actually not equal because when you start talking about resources, we're not in the same ball game. When we talk about education, the wheel canes of the world do not want to own up to the reality and even the education system is rigged differently. Will Kane is a graduate of the University of Texas. There were some white University of Texas folks who were angry when black students were going to be first admitted. It was uncovered a few years ago in the documentation where they found the president of the U U UT said, y'all, don't worry about it. We've discovered our secret weapon. We ain't got to worry about these black students populating the University of Texas. And they said, what are you talking about? We we know what the law is. Brown versus Board of Education being desegregated. What are you talking about? He said, we don't have to worry because we've got standardized testing. He literally said, we know that they gonna be limited because of the implementation of standardized testing because they do not do well on standardized testing. I dare you to look it up, Will Kane. It's right there. So when y'all talk about merit, the rules are clear. The rules are open. And that's why a Will Kane could get hired at an ESPN because his agent hooked it up. Because the rules ain't clear. The rules ain't published. Because you got no skill set. 
You can't even carry the sports bag of a Stephen A. Smith or Jamel Hill or any of the black folks who are there because they're an actual journalist. Yet you were opining and hosting on ESPN even though you did not have the requisite credentials to be able to sit in that chair. So here's ESPN elevating you, yet we're barely seeing Howard Bryant, when Howard Bryant has authored numerous sports books, written numerous stories, is one of the most profound sports writers of our generation. Yeah, you sitting there hosting the show right now on Fox News, and you wanna talk about merit? Press play. Well, you would say that, and I would say to you that the power structure in the United States of America is still predominantly white. And so as a result, what white America is asking you to do is ultimately to trust that your heart is going to be in the right place. And there are a plethora of people throughout minority communities in this country who would challenge that and would say, no, we don't necessarily believe that to be the case, which is why we need the laws to help us. When you bring up sports, and you and I have argued back and forth as friends and brothers talking about the world of sports and some of the iniquities that have taken place, you can bring up the NBA, for example. I can point to something called the meritocracy because I see their performance on the court just as much as you do. There isn't some curtain. There isn't some glad, proverbial glass ceiling. Yeah. We're, we're, we're literally witnessing it. But when we look at the NFL, for example, the Rooney Rule was still in existence. This is the number one professional sports league in this country. Why is the Rooney Rule still in existence? Because we've seen one opportunity after another after another where capable, qualified black individuals mm -hmm. were bypassed because of the system that was in place, primarily run by white individuals who asked us to trust them, but then prove they weren't worthy of the trust that they requested. Yeah. And so those are the kind of challenges we have to deal with as a country, and there's just no way around and, that. And the only way we can make it better is people like yourself and myself talking about it honestly and openly. I agree. And, and I will say that I, I think that the, the mistake that we often make and where you and I find our debate is whether or not we ascribe all those differences to the, the, the big factor sure. being race. Listen, um, uh, and next time we're come together, on, I come on, come on. See, I, I, I'm done. So here's where we get to the whole meat of this whole deal. He sat here, and you know he didn't want to address the Rooney Rule. See, because Will Kane didn't want to have to address. Wait a minute, hold up. If black folks are so successful on the field, why did that opportunities off the field? See, they don't want to deal with that. So you notice how he he got uh 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 he got real quiet. Because, see, they don't want to have to confront that. Now, I sat there and listened to eight and a half minutes of that debate. And what's interesting to me is I sat there and I listened to Will Cain talk about merit, 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 individual, why we got to use race, and this never came up. Study on Harvard finds 43% of white students are legacy athletes related to donors or staff. The numbers drops dramatically for black, Latino, and Asian American students with less than 16% each coming from those categories. The study find. So Will, if you want to talk about why are we focusing on race, why do you ignore race here? Why are you so silent on race here? Oh, could it be at those white students, if it wasn't for legacy, 75% of them would never get in. And since you want to talk about race or you don't want to talk about race, the same legacy says that if your daddy or your mama or your grandfather or your grandmother or your great-grandfather or your great-grandmother attended the institution, you get points for legacy. Well, guess what? H how many black people were able to attend many of these schools? So that means a significant number, thousands, millions of white kids across America, Harvard, Yale, in the past at your alma mater wheel, University of Texas, and my alma mater, Texas A&M, legacy was allowed. So white students today are benefiting from Jim Crow and getting credit 
and black students are unable to do so, but you want to talk about merit. Why did you not bring up legacy? And why are all of these white conservatives silent on legacy? Oh, because the beneficiaries of legacy are white students or white kids who are grossly unqualified. And then he goes, well, you know, I don't quite understand, Stephen A., you talk about these things and, and then we talk about, you know, the, you, know, you know, but what's the impact? See, this here. See, remember y'all, he started off talking about, no, they're individuals. We're, we're individuals. They're, we're, they're not groups. I don't see Greg and Reese and Candace uh, and Randy coming up. I don't see them as four black people, three black women and one black men. I see them as individuals. Well, guess what? The, how, the home appraisal industry does not see us as individuals because it's amazing how we still have widespread racism in the housing industry. New York Times article for November 2nd, 2022, widespread racial bias found in home appraisals. Researchers found evidence of a persistent practice that gives higher values to homes when the occupants are white and devalue them if the owners are people of color. That's a fact. Why is it that black people in this country will have never had home ownership hit 50 percent? It's because the because uh, it was the it was the home industry. It was the folk, the mortgage brokers who created redlining. And black folks were unable to buy in areas. And then if they were able to sell their home for values far less. And so therefore, white folks were able. See, 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 Will, this is what happens when you're dealing with a smart brother. OK, and this is why this story is so important right here. It's because, see, the housing story from The New York Times is affected by this story here. Because, see, Will, when the white students get legacy and get a leg up to go into colleges and the black folks don't, they're able to get college degrees, then when they get a hookup like you did to get hired at the ESPNs of the world where they don't have the skill set, they're able to then make a large amount of money in those jobs. So your black, your black journalists, they don't make uh, the six figures and the seven figures like you are making. They make in the low six figures or make the five figures, which means they can't buy larger price homes. And then when you get to sell your home, you sell it at a higher value. You get to pocket those proceeds and then invest that money, which allows for you to then be able to buy media companies and to do more if that black person is, isn't able to do so. And so then it's the same case when a black person can't get that high job, yet they have a college degree, but that white high school dropout is making more money than them. But then you say, I see individuals. And this will is what we call systemic racism. And we were talking about how do we correct the wrongs of the past? What you want is for us to continue the system of we're now on the same field, playing field. No, we're not. Because if you even look at your own story, if you were actually honest with yourself, Will Kane, you know you had no business being on ESPN and no business right now being at Fox News because it wasn't merit. So the day y'all want to have a merit discussion, please, by all means, let's have a legacy conversation. If y'all want to have a merit conversation, please, by all means, let's talk about how white folks in Silicon Valley can go pitch an idea on a napkin and go raise $100 million, or when this firm could raise $200 million for a messaging app and 95% of the users are fake, but somebody black can't even raise $5 million in the same system. You want to have that conversation, Will Kane? You can call me anytime, any day to have the conversation. But I don't think, Will, you nor Fox News 
have the courage to call a brother like me to have that conversation because see if I have that conversation on Fox News I'm going to enlighten your white viewers and they're not going to be living in uh, a cave where they somehow got a blanket over their head and they somehow completely clueless about the reality of what's happening here in America because it'll be real hard for you Will to have the same conversation when I would have to force you to answer the very difficult questions <clears throat> that speaks to how you got to where you got and it wasn't because of your race and you might say oh no I, I got here because of merit because I worked hard because I made the right connections could be but the record shows something totally different. Let me know when you want to have that conversation. You got my number. I'm ready anytime, any day. Any day that ends in D-A-Y. Let a brother know. <laughs>